Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin? Here. Council Vice Mayor Walter? Here. Councilmember Woolrich? Here. Councilmember Hawkins? Here. Councilmember Gleen? Here. Councilmember Anderson? Here. Councilmember Wall? Here. Thank you, Jim. We'll stand for a moment of silence and pledge of allegiance. Keep it in mind tonight, a little girl that was unfortunately died of a traffic accident. She just graduated from here. Uh, last year. Also keep in mind, a girl many of you knew is Holly Hall. She's been deployed to Iraq, so she's a local girl out of South, she's living or stationed in South Carolina, and we'd like to uh, just keep her in your prayers for safety. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. She pulled it. Next agenda item is called to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call of the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. At this time, I do not have any requests. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to stand up and say anything and call the public? Seeing no movement, I'll close call the public. Presentations. Introduction of the 2016-2017 Town of Florence Information Technology Interns. Mr. Schaefer. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. Tonight I'm here to present information to Council regarding the Information Technology Student Internship Program and introduce both participants, participating students to Council. To give a brief background, the Town of Florence Information Technology Department was looking for ways to collaborate with Florence High School regarding the use of their media studio for creation of government access channel and website video content. Many municipalities provide some form of internship or volunteer opportunities for teenagers, which can be a great way to develop their skills, help define a solid career path, and create interest in local government. We wanted to do the same and made the decision to reach out to Florence High School to start a dialogue. Through multiple meetings and open discussions with Deputy Town Manager and Florence High School staff members, we determined the best partnership would be to utilize student interns that were currently participating in the Florence High School Multimedia Broadcasting class. Students enrolled in this class are under the supervision and direction of Jim Nephew. In class, they record, edit, and broadcast their Go For News, which can be viewed on their Florence High School website, public service announcements, school sports, and other related functions. They are skilled in microphone camera setup, teleprompter programming, audio video editing and broadcasting, multimedia content creation, and much more. This makes the student internship a mutually beneficial relationship. The town of Florence will benefit from the expertise of fourth year students who are specializing in multimedia creation content, content creation and studio recording, in addition to being granted full access to the Florence High School Media Studio. The students will benefit from the opportunity to directly apply their training by providing professional programming for town audio video and town website content. Furthermore, they will be assisting with recording, editing and broadcasting the town council meetings and various other town meetings 
which will subjectively expose them to government processes and proceedings. As this program is in its infancy, it will continue to grow and we will continue to build upon the program. We aim to provide relevant and better overall quality content to our citizens through the government access channel and town website. We will learn and grow from citizen feedback regarding this content, provide additional training for students, and help develop a solid career path for their future and strive to get youth more involved in local government. With that being said, I'm proud to introduce two students currently participating in this program. Austin. This is Austin Rodriguez. He's our first student in the program. He's a senior at Florence High School and is currently in his fourth year of multimedia broadcasting. He brings a wealth of broadcasting experience to the table. He works hard to streamline broadcasting processes, all while providing professional quality audio video effects. I'm Austin Rodriguez. Uh, like Trent said, I'm a four-year multimedia student. Um, I also compete in FBLA, uh, Future Business Leaders of America. Uh, I competed in a few, uh, business um, video production. I placed fourth in state and 72nd in nationals. Um, I thank you for this opportunity to improve my video and production skills. Well, that sounds that sounds pretty good. Now let me ask you a question. Did this go for your 40 hours of community service work that you have to perform? No, I have already com uh, completed all my community service. Hours. You have to do that too. Okay, well that shows dedication to getting that done. Austin, congratulations on your placing in the state and also in the national. Our second student is Kwa Nguyen. He's a senior at Florence High School. Kwa, come on up. He's currently in his fourth year of multimedia broadcasting as well. He exhibits an expertise in audio video uh, programming as well as multimedia content creation. Good evening, Council. My name is Kwa, and as Trenton mentioned, I am a fourth year media student at Florence High School. And next year I will be graduating. ASU is giving me a four year scholarship for video games. And the only downside with that is I have to take computer engineering, which I love, but I want to go into the business field. With this opportunity, it will help me like a lot with um, the career I'm going into, which is computer programming as of right now. Um, other than this job, I have a side job, which is I compete uh, nationwide and outside of the US in video game tournaments, which I have won money from. <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to thank all of you for this opportunity to improve my skills in editing, programming, and just improving my future, pretty much. Well, Kwai, we, we appreciate what you're doing. We hope you learn a lot. And uh, just don't forget, you went to Florence High School, graduated there, and you worked for the town. Everywhere you go in life, remember the town of Florence. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Includes my presentation. I'm available for any questions council may have. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can we see the uh, high school uh, website on the town website? Is there a link there for it? Uh, there currently is not, but it was something we could definitely add to the site. That'd be good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Excellent opportunity. I'm thankful for whoever came up with that idea. That is wonderful. It was a club. It was a collaboration between the deputy town manager, Lisa Garcia, and myself, and Florence High School staff. Good, good job. I'm sure they can teach us some things, too. Actually, thanks go out to the budget committee, because I believe it was the budget committee's idea. Uh, and thanks to the council for funding our ability to have interns from high school kids. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Thanks. Good. It's always good to have programs like this to work. Right. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Item B, proclamation declaring October 16th through the 22nd as National Friends of the Library Week. If the mayor would like to come down, I'll read the declaration. I think uh, Ms. Webster from the Friends of the Library is here to receive. National Friends of the Library Week proclamation, whereas Friends of the Florence Public Library Incorporated raise money that enables our library to move forward from good to great, uh, providing resources for additional programming, much needed equipment, support for children's summer reading, and special events throughout the year. And whereas 
Work from the Friends highlights an ongoing basis of fact. Our library is a cornerstone of the community, providing opportunities for all to engage, enjoy, and lifelong learning and connect with thoughts and ideas of others from ages past to the present. And whereas the Friends understand the critical importance of well-funded libraries and advocate to ensure that our library gets the resources it needs to provide a wide variety of services to all ages, including an access access to print, electronic materials, along with expert assistance and research, readers advisory, and children's services, and whereas the Friends gift their time and commitment to the library, sets an example how volunteerism leads to a positive civic engagement and the betterment of our community. Now and therefore it be resolved that Tom J. Rankin, Mayor of the Town of Florence, proclaims October 16th through 22nd, 2016 as National Friends of the Libraries Week in Florence, Arizona, and urges everyone to join the Friends of the Library and thank them for what they do to make our library and community so much better. Emily, come forward, please. On behalf of the Town Council, myself and Rose, mm -hmm. and I think that, uh, there she is, she's sitting over there. This is something that I, I believe is very important. You put up with us before we had you a decent library to work in. We have a beautiful facility right now. You all are helping with everything that's going on. We really appreciate that. And that's what citizenship is about Florence, Arizona, and people jumping in and doing a good job. And personally, I know you guys have been doing a good job because I talk to Rose every once in a while, <laughs> okay? Well, Mary, again, on behalf of the town council and myself, thank you very much for the job and take it back to your, to your members and let them know it also. You, got, you wanna say something? Thank you very much. On behalf of the Friends of the Library, we are pleased to do this for the town. We're excited about how we can support the library, and we do urge everybody to join us. Thank you. Well, thank you. No, it's thanking to you. Uh, again, thank you very much. You want to, we'll just take a picture here then. Item number C, presentation from the 150th Advisory Ad Hoc Committee. Mr. Mayor and Mr. Hughes. Down here. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, we're coming up on the end of 2016. So uh, been meeting on and off throughout the year to talk about the different ways we can celebrate and uh, raise awareness of the town of Florence's 150th anniversary. And um, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago. Not a whole lot of folks were able to make that meeting, but that's okay because we're on the, like I said, the home stretch. So we know what's going on. We've been working with people throughout the year. And uh, we hope uh, we can wrap this up with a and go out with a bang on the 31st. But upcoming town events, um, I'm gonna give you just a brief overview and then Allie's gonna go into the meat of things because we all know that she does the, the bulk of everything. She does a great job doing that. So, but we've got the Florence Carnival. This is gonna be a five day carnival on the 27th through the 31st. Halloween Fright Fest on Monday the 31st. Junior Parada Parade on the uh, Saturday, November 26th. Christmas on Main is December 2nd, and then, like I said, we're going to wrap up with the New Year's Eve block party on December 31st. Um, we did want to um, make uh, folks aware of some other events that are coming up in town, not necessarily related to the 150th, but certainly a, a good time to celebrate everything that's Florence, and that's the homecoming parade this Friday on Main Street. Um, something that's interesting, and I know a few of the council members were at last year, uh, Pony Express on November 5th is coming through, and uh, Allie will maybe touch on that a little bit. Um, and then Anthem celebrates the arts on November 12th. So just some other events that are going on, just so everybody knows there's a lot happening here. In town. <laughs> so town event. With that, I'll turn it over to Allie to kind of talk about some of the details of some of these things coming up. And if you have any questions, you can ask her along the way. Allie. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yeah, our first event coming up is the uh, Carnival. That's going to be October 27th through the 31st. They're going to, it's going to be a little bit smaller than last year. The same company wasn't interested in coming out again this year. So we reached out to a new company, and they're going to be here the 27th through 31st. Um, about six rides, a couple games, food, 
food for the community. You needed it. Allie, yeah. pull that mic down toward you just a little bit too, honey. There you go. <laughs> the next event is our Halloween carnival, or our Halloween Fright Fest. That's going to be on Halloween night. We have 20 game booths in the outfield, a corn maze that we're getting from an inflatable company. Um, the credit union is going to be running the costume contest for us this year, and the women's club is going to be doing the pumpkin carving contest. We'll also have food vendors there as well. Um, it's a great event for all the kids. <laughs> we're looking forward to a great attendance this year again. <laughs> the Junior Parada Parade, we've reached out to 80 new participants this year. We're hoping to get a better turnout for the parade. Our goal is to get at least 50 um, parade entries. So we've reached out to all those people. We've also reached out to all the people who have participated in this event in the past. So that event will start at 10 o'clock with the parade and then the rodeo will be going on out at the rodeo grounds as well. The Christmas on Main Street event, we are doing the same with that. Um, it'll be spread up and down Main Street from 12th down to Ruggles. Um, we're going to be having pictures with Santa, uh, pony rides for the kids. Just all, we're encouraging all the businesses on Main Street to get involved with this event and open their doors for that. Um, and then the light parade will conclude the night, and that'll begin at 8 o'clock. And then the last but not least is our New Year's Eve block party. On this map, you can see that we're planning on having two uh, beer gardens. One will be at the Legion, and then one will be down at Cocopelli Moon. The, everything in between that will be very family-oriented, um, inflatables for the kids and different kid entertainment going on. In the two beer gardens, um, we're working with the Legion and Cocopelli to bring in some entertainment and we'll have a stage at both of those locations and then to conclude the night we plan on having a, a fireworks show. So. And I'll turn it back over to Brian. <laughs> Thank you Allie. Um, and just as a reminder we did have quite a few sponsors step up this year. Uh, Pulte, Country Thunder, Geo, Sun Power were probably our big ones and then we did uh, receive Lots of other uh, funds um, from some of the smaller uh, logos there. You see APS, Taco Bell, Main Street Family Practice. And that doesn't include some of the other uh, businesses that stepped up and just sponsored individual events. Um, I don't know who they all are, but I know we've had some that just wanted to be involved with movies in the park. We've had some that just wanted to be involved with uh, um, SRP, for instance, uh, gave us $5,000 towards the 4th of July event. So. Um, but these, uh, these sponsors here in particular uh, definitely focused on the 150th as a whole. So we want to thank them and uh, support them throughout the year. Um, uh, just a reminder, our financial <coughs> summary, our revenues, uh, $23,000 just again from that group. Doesn't include all the other ones that we received for individual uh, sponsorships that helps offset the costs. Uh, we've spent a little bit on banners, merchandise, marketing. And then we've got some of these future events, Carnival and the Block Party, that we're working on still to, to kind of eat up the rest of those funds. Um, lastly, we just want to remind folks that if you want to get some uh, commemorative memorabilia merchandise, we've got t-shirts, uh, mouse pads, coffee mugs, and the banners that are up on Main Street and up in the Anthem area are still for sale as well. If you want to uh, get one of those, hang it in your business or in your garage. Those are available. We'll be taking them down after uh, uh, the first of the year. So. Um, lots of stuff happening still. We encourage everyone to be involved. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, help out in any of those uh, remaining events, we certainly could use your help, uh, especially New Year's Eve. We really want to have a good time on that one. So um, with that, um, if anybody has any questions, Allie and I would be happy to answer them. Anybody have any questions? You know, I've been uh, promoting this quite every place I can go to, to get people to come down because the family orientation on New Year's, not being in an area where there's no alcoholic beverages served, uh, there will be areas for alcoholic beverages, but, but have a family outing to begin the, you know, end the 150th year and begin our 151st year. So, and I hope to be around for the 200th, but I don't know. But that's uh, just every, everybody promoted as much as you can get people down. I know they're already making arrangements for their, their parties and everything like that. 
but to come down and uh, you're going to have fire pits along Main Street so people can stay warm? Still working out the details, but we'll have something folks warm. We, we're going to have some, you, it's going to be a little cooler, so people with small children, they do need some warmth and everything like that. Are you going to separate out the bouncies, or are you just going to have them along Main Street, or how are you planning on that? We plan on doing that similar to Road to Country Thunder where they were in the, I believe it was um, Hawkes Square. So we plan on putting them there again, or nearby. And, and we're going to have that area fenced off where the kids can't get out and and, yeah. and we'll have people there watching their kids. So if the people want to go someplace else, their kids can play in there and, and they'll be safe. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But again, we just need to sponsor it. We just need to be, get uh, the word out to the people to get them down here for the 150th birthday party. And we got another meeting coming up this month? Um, probably, our, uh, yes, I believe the fourth Wednesday, and that will be our, probably our last meeting before we, uh, for, the, for the year. Okay. So if anybody would like to attend, we'll be here. If there are no other questions, Brian, Ali, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or a member of the public objects to the time uh, at the time that the agenda is called. Item A, approval of purchase of traffic signal equipment from Sierra Transportation and Technologies in an amount not to exceed $69,416.43. Item B, approval of the Coolidge Florence Elks Lodge Special Event Liquor License Application to the Arizona Department of Liquor Licenses Control for the Sun City Anthem Private Event to be held on October 21st, 2016. Item C, authorization to enter into a contract with Creative Paving Solutions, LLC, for sandblasting and ceiling improvement on Main Street between Ruggles and 12th Street in an amount not to exceed $40,000. Item D, authorization to enter into a lease agreement between the Town of Florence and Wiegand Law Offices, PLC, for the Bruning Camp Building. Item E, procl proclamation declaring October 2016 as National Community Planning Month. Item F, approval of the September 6th and September 19th, 2016 Council Minutes. Item G, receive and file the following Board and Commission Minutes. One, June 29, 2016 and August 31, 2016 Historic District Advisory Commission. Item two, June 15, 2016, Library Advisory Board Minutes. Item three, July 7, 2016, Planning and Zoning Commission Minutes. That's our, our consent agenda. Does any member of the council have anything they'd like taken off the consent agenda? I'd like to pull the an item G, the June 29, 2016, HTAC Minutes. Mm -hmm. So item G will be taken off the consent agenda. Any other? G I. Item I under G. Just the June 29th minutes for the historic district. Okay. Commission. G one. So we'll take off item G I, the first meeting of the historic district advisory commission. Does any member of the audience have anything you'd like taken off the consent agenda? Say no movement. We need a motion make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the uh, with the exception of uh, GI or G1. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item G1. Any other discussion? Hearing and I'll call the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I would just like to, for the minutes in that particular meeting to reflect be specific about the plaque that was hung in the American Legion building. You want to amend them, have the minutes amended? That's what I just said, yes. I would like for the minutes to reflect the, be specific about the plaque that was hung in the American Legion historic building. And I don't, it doesn't really matter how it's worded, but I like for people to know what the plaque was for and so the plaque. We will add the title of the plaque plus the exact wording on the plaque into the minute. Thank you. Anybody have any discussion on that? That being said, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 29th Historic District Advisory Commission with the amendment to the 
I'll second. We have a motion and second to approve the item, uh, consent item Gen G1. Mr. Mayor? Yes. The way that that item was pulled, it wasn't just the one meeting, it was physically all of item I, so the motion should reflect the amendment to June 29, but also include August 31. Okay. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the Historic District Advisory Committee with the June 29th meeting reflecting the addendum and also approve the August 31st meeting. Now, who seconded? I second. I approve it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve agenda item G1, including both dates, with the corrections to the minutes to be added. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. New business, item A, discussion approval or disapproval of a contract with AJP Electric for construction of future traffic signal to be located at the intersection of Hunt Highway and Attaway Road in an amount not to exceed $101,520.90. Chris Salas. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, the item for approval tonight is for the uh, essentially the labor for the intersection improvements at Hunt Highway and Attaway. That would include the, the construction of the underground foundation for the poles, the setting of the poles, the mast arms, the running of the wire, the installation of the conduit. The procurement of that was all handed under a JOC approved through Maricopa County and that has been reviewed by our in-house legal and we're purchasing off of that agreement. JOC stands for job order contracting. I apologize. Job order contracting is a special procurement method under state of Arizona law as alternate project delivery. In other words, piggybacking on it. Piggybacking on another city's contract that it has for similar work. Which would save us some money under that than having to go out for bid and, and just wait and see what we get. Now, you kind of want to explain what's going on out there so the folks will know exactly and the time limit if you have one. Yes, sir. The idea originally was to purchase the temporary traffic signals, the trailer signals out there from Pinal County. Pinal County purchased those approximately, I think, in 2006, 2007. They paid in excess of $200,000 for those trailers, and they are now able to be purchased for about $150,000. They were not interested in selling the trailers and taking that, that big of a loss, understanding the market value is no longer what they paid for it. Uh, they informed the town of Florence that they would not sell them to us to purchase our own. At that point, I decided to look at two avenues, one, the temporary trailers, and then one, a future signal that would accommodate the ability to grow into the future. The trailers, as today, were actually hit by something. So we understand that they were actually hit hard enough where they were moved and now are a little bit out of whack and we've went out there and adjusted it. Um, police report was filed as well as Pinal County was out there. This is not a, a permanent solution and I'm glad that this kind of happened on the same day to show that it's not a permanent solution. So we decided to move forward on a permanent traffic signal that will allow a right turn lane to be installed in the future northbound out of Attaway and justified as far north as we can within our current right-of-way to allow future widening of Hunt Highway. Improvements to the intersection will include video detection or vehicular detection, I should say. It's not necessarily video detection, but vehicular detection. So it will improve the level of service, LOS, of the intersection. Uh, that'll Again, that'll help people expedite traffic in the off hours. We'll be able to program it throughout the day for different uh, minimum green times in certain directions will be able to adjust this. It's fully programmable. The signal will eventually will be coming back to the council for an IGA with Pinal County to um, do maintenance of that signal. We're using a Siemens controller, the same one the county uses, so they can maintain it. The same poles that the county is using in case there is an accident. Um, a lot of the hardware is very, very standard for the industry. We didn't do anything fancy. And um, essentially, the, this first phase, this is as approved in the CIP, this is the first phase of that. And initially, 
the traffic signal will not include any additional roadway improvements. There will have to be a guardrail installed north of the intersection to provide clear zone, essentially protection because of the poles within that clear zone, but there will be no roadway portion of this project. We will be working with um, skid, <laughs> skid on widening the road out of way to provide a northbound right turn lane, which will facilitate essentially the ability to remove those right turns from the left turn, which today you cannot do, and that is a bottleneck. Right. Mr. Don, Mayor. This is great. In the <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes. Chris is being exceptionally humble. Let me, um, let me kind of explain to you what went down here because he's not saying it. Um, this signal has been programmed in the CIP for quite some time and was held up due to some challenges regarding right of way uh, in this area. Uh, we are up against a severe deadline in terms of construction of a brand new traffic signal, meaning that the county said we can use their temporary traffic signals until the end of December. Um, he's come up with a way uh, to not only be able to procure, design, and construct in an incredibly tight time frame, uh, but also a way to very efficiently and effectively construct a signal without absorbent costs and still allow for the ability to do future improvements in this vicinity. I think, but most impressively, he's come up with a design concept that does not impact those right-of-ways where we were challenged before. So all these improvements for this signal, which is has an expandable ability for the roadway underneath it, will be placed in our existing right-of-ways, how they exist today. And, and when it goes up and is built, uh, it's going to look a lot different than what you traditionally see as a traffic signal, but will function uh, quite well uh, for the three legs of the intersection. So. Um, it's a pretty impressive project. I'm sure that Chris would like share like to share more with you uh, in uh, in the future regarding that. As far as the schedule goes, uh, I think that one of the things that we started off with we started off with an incredibly aggressive timeline for the design. Uh, I've been working with the construction company before the approvals of this to make sure that when we approve this, that they would have enough time in their minds to get it done. So both the design and the construction crew were not just chosen for their, their qualifications, but for their ability to meet the deadlines. Hopefully, we'll be turning dirt somewhere late in November, and AJP has essentially signed on for to get the signal done in 30 days, if all the hardware is here. So that that is the importance of approving all the items to get the hardware, um, I guess, procured. Um, but I guess through all of the contacts over the years that we've been able to, to create in the relationships, a lot of this, as soon as we put in the order, they've been stocking this knowing that this signal is coming. So I guess years of hard work have allowed us to, to kind of build relationships where they understand that this is coming and the items are kind of already sort of in the loop. Not purchased, but in the loop. So pre-ordered, they're stocking them. And the idea is to turn this signal on like I said before the deadline of December 31st, one thing that I, I tell people a lot of times about is with AJP, we had a signal that we did in an incredibly short deadline that we turned on the day before school on a Sunday in the rain the day before school. These are contractors that if they say they can get it done, they will get it done. They will put the hours in, they will work Saturdays, they will do whatever. They will commit to a deadline and they will get it done. So I think that's another important uh, reason, again, to get this done to make sure. Understanding that if it's January 1st, Pinal County is not going to hook up the trailers and leave. But, <laughs> but the idea is to uh, get this done. Can, can you get this information to the ADOT on how they can put a <laughs> light up? up? <laughs> There's a reason why I don't work for ADOT. <laughs> it's, yeah. We, 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 I mean, we've been waiting for one down here on... Diversion Dam Road in 79 for four or five years now. If we can put it up in less than two months, it seems like they should be able to do the same thing. Chris, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Well, I, I just like to compliment Chris because the last time this was presented to us, it was going to take two to three years to get this done. And I just can't 
thank him enough for what he's done here and for particularly my neighbors who use that intersection daily. So thank you very much, Chris. Becky? I'd like to commend you, Mr. Salas, for the way that you bid this contract out. Uh, it's wonderful that you're looking out for the town of Florence, giving us the most um, uh, expertise in this field and getting this project done efficiently, but more than anything, saving also and concerned about the taxpayer's dollar. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I just have a quick question. Is this uh, signaling going to be solar powered? And if not, where is the power coming from? The power currently is north of the intersection. There's the uh, there's a guy wire that comes down right there in that last pole is right where our meter pedestal battery backup unit will be deployed right there. So we do we've already have an agreement that's been signed by ED2 on the design and the construction of the service. And everything everything is taken care of in line with that. It's to, to be clear with the public, one of the challenges with the signal, if it was under a traditional design, is how would get power to all four legs of the intersection, not only the right-of-way concerns. Chris's design utilizes the ability to get the power uh, from the same side where it's provided, i.e. the ED2 line. So as you can tell, there's a lot of thought that's gone into uh, the design. Thank you very much. And I'll just say just from an aesthetics viewpoint, I'm, I'm glad to see that because all that stuff out there is so ugly at that intersection. So it looks like a big junk pile with those temporary <laughs> lights. So I'm glad to see this. And thank you for getting it being cost effective as well. Thank you. Sure. I, I did of that. Um, I wanted to compliment you on the cost savings, the fact that it is only $101,520.90 is far better than the 150000 that Pinal, or 200000 that they wanted, even though it's only valued at one hundred and fifty. I also appreciate how you addressed the fact of the timing at the light, because that was a great concern that was brought forward. So thank you for that as well. I appreciate how you take your time, you research it, and you move forward. And the timing in this is definitely appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. The, if I understand right, Chris, the total cost is going to be running around 150000 somewhere in there for the, for the material and the labor. We do have two items. We have the 69000 and then the 101000 And those have, as indicated in the cost estimate, which I believe is labeled as Exhibit 1, those have large contingencies in case the design changes. Right. The design is not done as of today. We're literally in the process. We spec'd out all the equipment, understanding that the pole could get moved two feet here, two feet here, two feet here, but it, it's locked in essentially. But the idea is just in case we wanted to have that ability, we didn't want to miss the date, so there is a, there, there's a cushion in there. So these, these prices will come down. But yes, there are multiple items. But to be clear to the public, at the last meeting you did a contract to design, and then there's a contract to purchase equipment, and there's a contract to construct. Uh, the signal itself is going to cost more than $200,000 in total. But that is very inexpensive as compared to a traditional signal, which can be from 250000 to 400000 uh, in in today's uh, dollars. Um, we will see what the the signal that uh, Mayor, you brought forward is going to cost, but I would guess it will be around $350,000, the one that's going to be constructed over here on 79. And Chris, what is the traffic count out there? Do we have a traffic count out there at that intersection? Yes, sir, we do. I, I don't know the exact throughput, but I do know that in the mid-morning, it's over 100 left turns. That's the important numbers, the left turns off of um, Attaway, and then for about four hours straight, it's over 300 left turns an hour. And that's, that's the critical number there, is those left turns, because those are impeding, those are the, um, the conflict movement right there. Right. So if we were to just block off Attaway, this, you know, you could free flow on Hunt Highway very adequately, but it is the 300 plus. It did meet two individual signal warrants. It's not even just one, it's, it met two individual warrants. I do believe the signal will have a substantial increase again in that level of service. The more people that are using Hunt and Attaway, more necessity for that light. Or traffic control device. Yes. <laughs> Don't call it a, a stoplight. 
he doesn't like that. <laughs> Any other question? Then we need a motion. I make a motion to approve the award of a contract to AJP Electric Company for the construction of the future traffic signal to be located at the intersection of Hunt Highway and Attaway Road in an amount not to exceed $101,520.90. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the award to contract to AJP Electric Incorporated for the construction of the future traffic signal to be located at the intersection of Hunt Highway and Attaway Road in an amount not to exceed $101,520.90. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Chris. Item B, resolution number 1602-16, discussion, approval or disapproval of a resolution of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending the town of Florence, fiscal year 2016-17, employee classification plan. Scott Barber. And ranking members of the council, we're asking this evening for this adjustment to our classification plan that you approved as a part of the budget for this year. I'm going to divide it into two pieces. The first piece is that uh, earlier this year, the Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor, announced changes to the rules regarding the Fair Labor Standard Act, Standards Act. And that's been around since um, back in the 30s that does a number of things, includes speaks to the issue of overtime compensation. And um, it was made applicable to uh, governmental entities in 1984 as a result of litigation in the, uh, the city of uh, San Antonio. And so we've dealt with the FLSA for a number of years. In terms of overtime, the particular law allows for certain tests to be performed to determine whether someone could be exempt from the overtime provisions. In other words, they're able to work more than 40 hours in a seven day work period before overtime is due then. And there are a number of tests that are performed, and one of the gateways to those tests is a salary level. And so you had to meet that first before you could perform other tests. Over the years and prior to the DOL, issue, DOL issuing their new rules, that threshold was $23,660 a year. So the employee had to meet that threshold, and then you'd go on to the other tests to determine whether or not they could be designated as exempt from the overtime provisions of FLSA. And the, uh, the president proposed some new rules, and the Department of Labor did issue those rules to be effective on December 1st of this year. And that raises, essentially, uh, the most important thing it does is raises that threshold to $47,476 per year. It was a review period and a comment period and what have you, but the rules have been released, and they're going to go into effect as everything stands the way it is today on December 1st. Now, the fact of the matter is there are, I think, 21 states that have filed legal action to stay that. And uh, I believe that legislation has been passed in the U.S. House of Representatives, which also would do that. But we as an employer, like every other employer, needs to move ahead with the idea that these rules are going to go into effect on December 1st. We took a conservative implementation perspective looking at the entry level rate for all of our position classifications. And as a result of that, this evening we're asking for a change to five of our classifications. One of those currently is not in use, and the other four involve just four employees. So with your action this evening, effective on December 1st, we'll come in compliance with the law, and those individuals, those, uh, those classifications, and practically speaking, those individuals will now be eligible for overtime compensation. And as I commented in the fiscal impact section there, um, that is the case, but our town managers uh, communicated with all of our department directors, and certainly those that are impacted, that he expects that we'll be able to, uh, to operate within the realm of, uh, of tools that are available to us management-wise and mitigate that possibility. So that's the first half of the recommendation, changing the classification under the Fair Labor Standards Act on five of our employee classes from, not, from exempt to non-exempt. The second part of the recommendation this evening involves some work that uh, Public Works Director Salas and I have been doing over the last several months. And that is um, looking at some things that were done prior to his arrival and then some adjustments that he's had, uh, is, has made over the last uh, several months that he's been here. And you'll notice in there that, that we've been working on some alignment issues. A Couple of the things were put in place by the town manager prior to his arrival. 
Several others uh, are recommendations that he and I have arrived at in relationship to moving, um, moving positions around within the organization. Anytime a department director comes to the HR office and says, I'm not looking for new resources, I just need to move some things around to get where we need to be, um, I pay attention to those things. And so I've been working with Chris and he with, uh, with uh, my office in making these things happen. And the resulting recommendation this evening is before you. And just to run through them rather quickly, um, in the issue of water and wastewater operations within the Public Works Department, prior to this recommendation, we've just had a utility superintendent. Uh, this basically speaks to separation that was accomplished by our town manager prior to Chris's arrival. And that is we're kind of separating out water and wastewater. And so we're changing utility superintendent to water superintendent, and then the individual who's been our senior plant operator. Uh, and since January has really been acting as our wastewater superintendent uh, in that role. So we're creating two new classifications and uh, in terms of budget impact, there is none with that. Then secondarily to that, looking at the issue of facility maintenance and specifically in those uh, things that have to be contracted out um, because we're not able to handle them in house, um, based on uh, our, again, coordination together, we're proposing to create a new facilities maintenance specialist classification. This is being accomplished through a transfer of a vacant position from Public Works Administration over into facilities and reclassifying it to facilities maintenance specialist. The idea there is that we are seeking someone with specific expertise of HVAC, um, we're cutting out a little bit there, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and what have you, and um, we will be doing, uh, we propose to do an internal recruitment to fill that position because it is a vacant position. We're moving from one area to another. And then finally, looking at the fleet services operation of the town, uh, we're proposing to move a position that is filled uh, from the uh, street division, maintenance worker one, over to facilities, or to fleet that is, and create a new classification called fleet services supervisor and the proposal is to reclassify that position and promote the incumbent. Uh, again, these are basically in situations where we've had individuals in temporary assignments and uh, it's worked out really, really well. Again, the, uh, the first part of the recommendation um, has potential budgetary impact, but under the direction of the town manager, we don't think it will have a practical impact. Secondarily, the, uh, the uh, recommendations are all being handled well within the parameters of the approved Public Works Department budget. Net net at the end of the day, we'll end up with several vacancies and actually a couple of vacancies in the street division that represent promotional opportunities. Chris and I have talked about those and what he wants to do is stand down on those, make these adjustments, operate for a while and see what happens. I want to stress this is not a departmental reorganization. This is simply a realignment of resources, positions and people within the department. And Chris arrived at the end of the budget process, so normally this might have taken place in the budget process. Because he arrived so late, we were not able to do that. So that's why one of the reasons he and I have been working on that. But that dis discussion or that description of what we're proposing, I'll stand to answer any questions you might have. You remember the council having any question? I, uh, I have a question about the financial impact. Maybe this is better for Brent. But uh, these positions uh, appear to be positions that require emergency type effort occasionally. And so it looks like there may be overtime required on these positions. Council Member Anderson, that's, that is, uh, that's potentially the case. Uh, the fact of the matter is that overtime is always a focus in our departmental operations that require that, as the budget uh, committee can attest to, there was quite a, quite a discussion about overtime budgeted in, in our departments. Um, again, the uh, our department director staff has received specific direction from our town manager to use the tools that are in our management tool bag, particularly in the area of flex time. And that is being able to flex off hours, recognize that extra hours are worked, but, but don't come in until late tomorrow within the work period that we designate. So that is a tool that's available and that we're going to use. In the case where overtime has to be paid, again, that's going to be handled within the parameters of the departmental budget. Thank you. I'm going to do my best to add to what Scott said. I think it's important for those folks watching on TV and in the audience tonight. What is essentially being done by HR and Public Works is an analysis of our existing resources, both financially and in terms of human capital, 
and figuring out how to properly allocate that uh, to become more efficient and more effective, which you hear me talk about all the time. In this case, I think it's important to highlight that not adding positions and uh, not asking for mon more money outside of the existing budget, but realigning within uh, our means and, and becoming more efficient and effective. The other thing I would like to highlight is Chris and Scott did a substantial amount of research in terms of the monies that were being spent on outside consultants to do work, particularly in the facilities department. And little did I know, <laughs> but we actually had uh, a staff person inside of our existing department uh, that was has been able to serve in an interim role who is a certified HVAC person and has done a lot of the type of work that we were hiring consultants on a weekly basis to perform in the town. Uh, so what he has uncovered is the ability to utilize our existing resources more efficiently uh, and to, a reali to realign to that effect based on uh, a vacancy that, that already exists in the department. Thanks. Thank you. Did you remember the question earlier? Council, do I have any questions? Any others? Okay, hearing none, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 1602-16, a resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, adopting the revised Town of Florence fiscal year 2016-2017 employee classification plan. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 1602-16. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I call for the question. All in favor, signify by say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Rep. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I have a few items tonight. Uh, the first one is to uh, announce to the council and the public that, uh, as usual, the Florence Police Department is very involved in supporting the Special Olympics. And this fall, they are going to have uh, a new <coughs> program that's going to be uh, during November, which you probably know, uh, entities all over the United States have Movember, where folks uh, that typically, fire and policemen, uh, who can't grow facial hair do special programs to grow facial hair uh, for charity. Specifically, in this case, it's the police department uh, who is going uh, to work through a program to uh, grow facial hair uh, and to sponsor and provide charitable donations to the Special Olympics. Uh, and a couple of the officers have actually come by and, and seen me, including one today who thanked me for the ability to participate in the event and how important it was uh, to uh, support the Special Olympics. Does that include the chief? I don't know. <laughs> you get a donut? Okay. <laughs> He said it, I didn't. Um, uh, the second thing is, is everybody aware of the GAIN event that's going to be held October 22nd? GAIN stands for Getting Arizona Involved in Neighborhoods. And the town of Florence, uh, along with Anthem, is going to be holding an event October 22nd, 2016, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Anthem Community Park Amphitheater. The event is to make our community aware of the benefits that the Town of Florence and the Town of Florence Police Department has to offer to the community. There will be informational booths, uh, crime prevention tips, alcohol and drug awareness, kids fingerprinting, neighborhood watch organization, fire department information, canine demonstrations, and much more. Uh, another, a number of other entities are going to participate in GAIN, uh, including Casa Grande PD, Coolidge PD, Pinal County Sheriff's Office, our National Guard, as well as the Border, border Patrol. Uh, there are a number of businesses who are also going to be involved, so please come out. Next, and I think she's gone. Uh, I wanted to bring to everybody's attention that American City and County Man Management, Ma City and County Magazine announced uh, via their website on September 26, the winners of the Igniting the, Igniting the Flames Award for Young Professionals. Uh, one of our own, Ali Feliz, uh, was nominated and finished in the top five out of 30 entities. Uh, if you go to AmericanCityAndCounty.com, bonus content, it has the Igniting the Flame Award uh, discussions as well as a bio on Ali. And I know she was here earlier. It's too bad she didn't know I was going to read this tonight. So next time you see Ali 
congratulate her on making the top five. Next is an announcement. The Bureau of Justice Assistance is pleased to inform you that your agency will receive an award under fiscal year 2016 Bulletproof Vest Partnership Solicitation. These funds have been posted to your account in the BV BVP system. A complete list of fiscal year 2016 BVT awards is available at www.ojpusdoj.gov. So thank you to our grants team, uh, as well as the police department for applying for that grant and receiving that grant. Uh, Chief, can you tell us how many vests that accounts for? Mayor Council, we generally are trying to purchase um, up to four vests a year. And those are expensive. They run around $1,000 a piece, but they're a very important piece of equipment for officers. Uh, they wear them daily and they have about a five year lifespan. And so we're constantly upgrading and changing those out as, uh, as, the, as they expire. So it's, it's a really good program. It certainly makes us a little safer, safer out there on the street in today's world. My last item, as, as council knows, I, I frequently get emails and positive comments about our staff and, and the job that they're doing on a daily basis. But last week I received an email that I thought was really cool. It kind of touched me because although I do not know the lady who sent this email, I see this lady all the time. And so when I got this email, I immediately was able to put a face with a name. Dear Mr. Billingsley, I'd like to take a minute of your day to thank you and to compliment your public works employees that work downtown on the streets and at the parks. It's now time to clarify it's not just public works, it's also the parks and recreation employees. I am a Florence resident and every morning I go for walks throughout the community with my newborn baby. Every time I see a city employee, I'm greeted with a hello and a good morning. Being the mom of three young children, a simple greeting of hello and their presence gives me peace of mind that my children and I are safe on our outings in our community. Your employees have a great presence in, in our community, are always seen working hard, paying attention and looking out for the community. Thank you for your time and please last, uh, pass this along to the appropriate town personnel. That's all I have. Thank you. Does any member of the public have anything in the call to the public that they'd like to say at this time? Seeing no movement, we'll close call to the public. Call the council, Bill. No, I just want to say it looks like we're uh, moving forward fairly quickly on the uh, beautification on Main Street. I'm glad to see they're moving right along. They've got most of the lights up, I think, now, or almost all of them, I think. Just a matter of getting the other lights down, I, and hopefully it'll just keep moving as fast as it is, has been, but that's all I have. Okay, Karen? I just want to add another event that uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to attend, and that is on Friday, October 21st, at the Anthem Grill, our police officers will be conducting a Tip-A-Cop uh, event. And so anyone who would like to come out and, and have dinner, uh, you will be served by and bussed by our officers in uniform. And uh, a lot of my friends and neighbors will be there, so we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Oh, and the benefit is for Special Olympics. Particular time? It's from 4 to 8 p.m. Sorry. That's okay. That's helpful. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you. John? I don't have anything. Becky? Yes, I have two things. First up, I attended uh, the movie in the park on Saturday night with my grandsons, and uh, there was a lot going on that night because there was a benefit uh, going on. But it was, I thought, was very well run. Uh, Coco was there. Everybody had a great time, and the movie was really cute, wonderful, and my grandsons had a ball. So I thank you for that. The second thing is I want to uh, thank you, Chris. Um, this morning, well, actually starting on Friday night, I had a problem where I thought that I was in fright night at my house. My house sounded like a heartbeat going at different times of the night, and on Saturday night, it was all night long. So 
Uh, this morning I called um, your department. Uh, David Hills answered the phone and directly gave me to Tim Wayne Scott, who appropriately sent uh, Peter Kelm out to my house, and within 15 minutes he had resolved the problem. My neighbor's meter had gone crazy, and my house was in a heartbeat mode. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. I just want to tell everyone that our Public Works Department, and especially the Water Wastewater Division, uh, who I am very proud of over these years, is a, a wonderful asset to the town, and they're very efficient, concerned, and didn't think that I was a crazy old lady. So thank you. <laughs> Don't say nothing on that bag. Care. I do. I was also a movie in the park and it was fabulous. Um, I would love to see a grant where we could have our own big screen movie projector so this way we can have them more often because while they are well attended, if we can have them on a more routine basis, I, I think that's something that's great for our communities. Coco did a great job as well. He was out there getting all the crowd excited. We saw some you know, our very young community doing some gymnastics, and it was wonderful. Allie went Facebook Live on it. I also want to thank Chris. Chris came out to Florence Gardens this past Saturday and provided the residents with an update of projects that have happened, projects that are happening, and to listen to their concerns. And I think that's great that we go out, we talk with the members of the community, especially about what we're doing, what we have done. Lastly, just to give an update out in public, I talked with Brent earlier and he helped put this together just so it's 100% accurate. There have been a lot of questions regarding the potential flood zones that discrepancies in Anthem discussed at our last council meeting. And I want everybody to know that our town manager and town engineer are diligently communicating with Baxter Design Group, Pinal County Flood Control, and Pulte to confirm and address the concerns that were voiced. It is our goal to resolve the issue working with Anthem's design engineer and Pulte. The town has requested and is currently awaiting confirmation from Pulte as to sponsoring an informational session to provide potentially affected residents and the town with an update. So we are taking this very seriously and moving forward expedited. So thank you all. Just let people realize that Saturday night we had a benefit for young lady for Gabby, out the Elks Club. It was so well attended, it exceeded anything that they anticipated. The posse was out there with 300 steaks. They opened up dinner at three o'clock, at five o'clock, they were gone at 10 bucks a pop. Good, a good meal for $10 the posse put on was, a, was a really great. I also found out before the night ended they only had two kinds of beer left that they had uh, consumed almost all the beer that the Elks Club had on hand. Uh, so you can imagine how many people were out there. They had a auction that raised quite a bit of money for, for the family, which was great. Gabby was there. She had been feeling a little bit ill earlier in the evening, but she came out and I think she went back in later. But she was there to see everybody that uh, was there to support her. And it was a great mixture of, and I don't want to make anybody on the council mad, but young, medium age, and elderly. Uh, I'm not elderly, but the, uh, and, and also a mixture of Coolidge and Florence. When no trouble gave, you know, I, I'm sorry, but uh, it was really a great, great event for a young girl here in town that really their family needed the help and i think that just shows what florence is uh, and, and coolidge because coolidge was really involved in it people from all over the i, I know there's some people from kansas that came in for it uh, i think that's the farthest way i heard of anybody coming in for it but they were here uh, some people from texas so it was great it was a, a good time uh, no trouble uh, it, it was really fun to be out there. As to what Tara was saying about the, the situation in Anthem with, uh, with the flood zone, there, were, there was information put out that I should have wrote a letter and in the paper I responded to those comments. 
It was not the town's responsibility to do that. It's between the buyer of the home and the seller of the property. The town cannot become and be held liable for giving out information that we don't have any control over as far as the Lomar maps are done. So it just needs to be explained that, yeah, once we found out about it, we started digging into it. It was something that we were not aware of until it, until somebody that was trying to sell their home and then we started working on it to find out the best solutions that can be handled. And I think with, in talking with Brent, we're on the right track. Again, it will be Pulte's decision when they want to put together a meeting and we will be there in attendance to answer any questions on behalf of the town. But again, it, the town's liability would not will not allow us to be interpreting maps, especially on Lomar's. Coming up this, this current event, current event, right? Right, Lisa? That's what the open meeting law says. Homecoming. I guess I forget how many years is this for high school. Do you do you remember, Jennifer? How many years? Oh, you didn't go to school here. But uh, it's going to be a, a great weekend here. Uh, Friday, there will be the homecoming parade. I'm not real sure. I think it starts about one. Uh, they will also be down in the park. Uh, getting together i guess there's a beer garden going on there other events are going to be being held out at the park so uh and then the game uh it's friday night at seven o'clock the gophers i think are six and one now <clears throat> seven and one uh, i thought it was well, see i'm a week behind so we're trying to get current <laughs> but uh those kids uh you, you should have seen them against globe I mean, poor Globe. I'm sorry, Brent. Yeah, uh, you know, I can understand why you left. If that's the reason you left to come down here, that's great. <laughs> but they manhandled Globe. And, but, but the one thing about Globe, they never gave up. They kept fighting and trying. They just were outmanned by the Gophers. Uh, and uh, with that, go Gophers, and we need a motion. I'll make a motion. We adjourn to executive session. We have a motion and a second to adjourn to executive session. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries.